supplies of oil yet discovered in Canada. We can't shut down the oil sands tomorrow. Uh, we need to phase them out. Imagine for a second that 170,000 jobs, which actually create 2.7 million jobs in other sectors and pay Canadians on average annually more than $200 billion in salaries, disappeared. And wait, just imagine that those jobs didn't actually just randomly disappear. In fact, they were targeted deliberately by a federal government. And on top of that, imagine that those jobs were in a sector that is the biggest investor and the biggest export in the country's entire economy. A piece of legislation passes the House of Commons and poof. Oh yeah, and the people who came up with this plan, oh, they can pat themselves on the back for a job well done. They congratulate themselves and each other while they fly around on private jets at fancy conferences and celebrate their plan to destroy millions of jobs. And look, I know this sounds unlikely, but it actually is the Liberal NDP coalition's plan to go after energy workers in Canada. And I have the proof. We need to talk about the so-called just transition. So hang on a second, let's go back. What actually is this just transition concept? Well, you've probably been hearing about it more and more in the news, more and more politicians are talking about it, but it's an idea that's been around for quite a while. It all got started a few years ago when heads of state, billionaires, celebrities, and a bunch of rich mucky mucks took their private planes for a big fancy international conference. In the Arctic, I was astonished to see. One of their big ideas was to transition societies away from oil and gas to some kind of new economy. And over the years, this so-called just transition thinking has gradually been adopted by anti-energy activists and governments all around the world. And this part's really important. Their objectives have expanded from their original foolish and unrealistic plan to phase out energy economies. And now it's really about radically restructuring societies, central planning, and forced wealth redistribution. And you'll probably remember that Justin Trudeau actually said COVID was a great opportunity to start reshaping society. And around the same time, these liberals started laying the groundwork for their so-called Just Transition Plan. This pandemic has provided an opportunity for a reset. This is our chance to accelerate our pre-pandemic efforts to reimagine economic systems that actually address global challenges like... Extreme. And so now here we are, two years later, and these liberals say they do plan to bring in a law to facilitate this so-called Just Transition in Canada in the next couple of months. I can understand if you think it sounds like I'm just making things up. And it's true, we haven't seen the Liberal legislation yet. But I want to show you something. This is an internal briefing memo for the Federal Minister of Natural Resources about their plans for this just transition idea in Canada. According to Liberals' own estimates, more than 2.7 million Canadian workers will face, quote, significant labor market disruptions. In other words, major job losses. Others will have to be retrained. The Liberals themselves are saying over a million workers in the building sector, 642,000 workers in the transportation sector, 292,000 workers in the agriculture sector, 202,000 workers in the energy sector, and 193,000 workers in the manufacturing sector will be impacted. And that's just the start. Okay, so let's get this straight. The Liberals have decided a bunch of jobs are undesirable, and their plan is to actually bring in a law where their measure of success is how many jobs they can destroy. That's crazy. But I think what's really important is it's not just about the specific numbers. It's 2.7 million Canadians. It's about people who need their jobs, who have to pay their bills, who have to support their families, who can hardly already make ends meet because of liberal driven inflation. And now, they're explicitly being targeted by these liberals. And job losses cause all kinds of problems, spikes in crime, in mental health challenges, in domestic violence and substance abuse. These things hurt everyone. But hold on a second, let's bring this back. What is the point of all this? What is it actually accomplishing? Canadian energy has the highest environmental standards in the world. And the world will continue to need oil and gas for decades to come. So it should be produced in Canada, and Canada should displace energy from dictators and despots to provide that energy to the world. So Canada is the best place to produce it, and Canada should be able to supply the world. Of course, the Liberal NDP anti-energy coalition is already making this nearly impossible for Canada. They're just gonna let 
dictators and despots with way lower environmental standards supply growing global energy needs. Because the truth is that demand for oil and gas around the world is growing. So there's a real choice here. That oil and gas can either be provided by Canada or by dictators and hostile regimes with much lower environmental standards. A few weeks ago, my colleague Andrew Scheer put out a great video showing how the carbon tax really isn't an environmental plan. It's just a liberal way to tax Canadians more. And the only thing that the carbon tax has really done is push money and jobs and oil and gas production out of Canada into other countries with lower standards and higher global emissions. It's a tax plan, not an environmental plan. This so-called just transition, it's just gonna be more of the same. And the reason we know that is because the Liberals promised to do this for coal workers and for coal communities. And you know what? They left those workers and those communities behind. And it's not just me saying that, it's the independent and nonpartisan Auditor General. And the truth is that right now, there isn't any other private sector in the entire Canadian economy that will be able to replace all those jobs. But the Liberals won't tell you that. So let's come back here for a second. I'm gonna do everything I can to push back against this legislation. But you know what the real solution is? It's electing Pierre Polyev as Prime Minister of Canada. But we need your help. So share this video with your friends and family, especially if you know anyone in a Liberal riding, and tell them to call their MP and let them know that Canadians don't want this unjust transition. So I hope this video has helped let you know what's coming and what we're fighting. And as always, thanks for watching.